So as uh, Tatiana is setting up, um, she is our fifth speaker and also the fifth nationality. So this is actually a very nice uh, uh, show of how the community is very international. Um, Tatiana is um, work, living and working in Moscow, Russia, working for Kaspersky Labs um, as a malware analyst. And she's going to talk about how she's using Suricata and how Suricata can be useful for malware classification. So please. Thank you. Okay. Please welcome Tatiana. Uh, hi, thank you. Um, today I will share my experience in uh, using Suricata for uh, malware classification. And uh, a few words about me. Um, I am a malware analyst uh, at Kaspersky at Android Threat Research Team, uh, where I'm looking for Android malware, uh, classifying it by families, and uh, suggesting new ways to detect. Uh, previously, I was a malware analyst at uh, Shift Malware Analyst Team, uh, where I analyzed and uh, provided detection for uh, malware for different platforms. And uh, I'm writing uh, Snort and Suricata rules uh, since 2015. Uh, I uh, began with Snort and then moved to Suricata. Uh, and uh, a lot of examples uh, in my talk will be for uh, Android platform. I will show uh, a lot of uh, real life examples of traffic. Um, a brief overview of uh, my talk is the following. Um, I will speak uh, about uh, why using Suricata for malware classification, uh, show uh, examples for different cases, um, and uh, then summarize. Uh, so uh, there are two common ways of uh, using Suricata. Uh, the most obvious way is uh, scanning passing traffic uh, on your network. Uh, and uh, the second way is uh, scanning uh, dumps of traffic uh, in pickup format, uh, for example, um, that are generated by suspicious, suspicious executable uh, on sandbox environment. And um, in our work, we uh, use both. Uh, but today I will speak mostly about uh, the second way, uh, so scanning uh, pickups. Um, if uh, we have executables, uh, why cannot we just uh, detect and classify them uh, using uh, the logic of uh, file antivirus? And um, here are several cases uh, when uh, Suricata can help. Uh, the first case, uh, how can we distinguish uh, different families uh, if uh, they, are, they are detected by uh, one antivirus rule? Uh, the second case is um, what if uh, samples from uh, one campaign uh, differ and are detected by different antivirus rules? Uh, the next case, um, what if the um, campaign is uh, multi-platform? Um, it is not difficult to uh, get uh, traffic dumps uh, from samples for uh, different platforms uh, and uh, scan them with one set of uh, Suricata rules, uh, while uh, antivirus logic uh, for different platforms uh, will differ in uh, most cases. Um, and uh, the first case um, is uh, when uh, file antivirus uh, classified the sample as malicious, uh, for example, using some uh, machine learning algorithm. Uh, it is uh, detected as malicious on a user, user's machine, uh, but we want to determine the campaign. And uh, let's go to the examples. Um, the first example is um, a, a, an old but uh, still alive uh, botnet for Windows, uh, forum book, or another name is Noon. Uh, it is uh, a powerful and uh, widespread stealer. Uh, it uh, captures keystrokes and uh, clipboard text 
uh, takes screenshots, uh, targets uh, web browsers, um, mail clients, messaging applications, and so on. Uh, it uh, uses malware as a service model for distribution. Uh, it means that uh, ready to use uh, malware is uh, sold or rent by the developer on hacking forums. Uh, it uh, has a lot of anti analysis tricks. Um, it uses uh, code obfuscation, encryption, uh, dynamic function importing uh, in order to avoid um, antivirus detection and uh, complicate the analysis. Uh, but uh, despite all of that, uh, it doesn't change its uh, communication with a uh, common control server uh, significantly for years. And uh, let's see uh, examples of um, its traffic. Uh, there were thousands of uh, different known executables for, uh, uh, with different common control servers uh, detected with uh, different antivirus uh, rules. And um, here are examples of traffic uh, from random samples uh, from the past two years. Um, you can uh, see that the format of the request um, is almost the same. Um, the uh, relative address can be described uh, using uh, regular expression, uh, one or several uh, directory names, uh, then um, uh, consisting of letters and numbers, uh, then a question mark and uh, parameter names and values in a uh, base64 like format. Uh, the header structure uh, also remains the same. Uh, there are only host and um, connection fields. Uh, domain names um, consist of two levels and uh, maybe uh, with 3W in the beginning. And uh, the value of connection field is uh, always close. And uh, here is an example of a Suricata rule uh, to catch um, all of these uh, samples. Um, I used uh, two regular expressions for uh, URI and uh, host. Uh, it's not very good for the performance, but uh, it's not critical um, when we're talking about scanning dumps of uh, traffic from sandbox. Um, so uh, this rule is, uh, uh, detects uh, HTTP GET method, then a uh, regular expression for the whole uh, URI, uh, regular expression for the whole um, host field. Um, HTTP connection value is always uh, close. And um, I use um, HTTP header names buffer uh, to specify that there are only uh, host and connection fields uh, in uh, this particular order. Uh, so uh, this case uh, is a good example of how different versions of uh, malware are classified as one family using Suricata. And uh, the next example is the opposite one. Um, it is um, HQR Android Dropper, um, a wrapper for malicious payload. Uh, it also is distributed um, using malware, malware as a, a service model. Uh, it is used mostly by uh, banking trojans and ransomware. Um, and it uh, doesn't uh, drop the encrypted uh, APK executable on the device, but uh, loads the decrypted code um, that uh, lies in its assets. Uh, the uh, most popular payloads of uh, this dropper uh, are such um, banking trojans as uh, Fake Token, Anubis, Asakup, uh, Mercher, SVPenk, uh, Gustuf, uh, and uh, the new one, uh, GIMP. Uh, we uh, found it about two weeks ago. Um, let's uh, take a look at uh, the executable of uh, this dropper. Um, you can see uh, here the structure of um, APK executable file of Anubis. 
Um, there are a lot of classes uh, with uh, random names. Um, here is a code inside uh, a random class. Um, it is um, heavily obfuscated, um, containing uh, junk strings and meaningless operations. And uh, somewhere between them uh, will be a short logic uh, of decrypting the actual payload. Uh, here is the structure of fake token APK file and uh, the classes. Uh, this is uh, the new one, uh, GIMP, and also its classes, and uh, Gustav Trojan. Um, as you see, uh, they are uh, very similar and uh, they are detected um, using uh, one antivirus logic, uh, but we want uh, to determine um, to which family uh, does the, uh, this concrete sample uh, belong. Um, and uh, let's uh, run them on the sandbox, uh, get pick up and uh, take a look at it. Um, so uh, this is the communication of Anubis Trojan with its uh, common and control server. And um, I should note that um, we mostly look, look at traffic um, from bot to server as a uh, life of a uh, common and control server um, is often short and uh, they soon start replying uh, with uh, 404. Um, and there were also cases uh, when um, uh, common and control server of one bot uh, started answering to uh, another bots um, as uh, cyber criminals tested several bots uh, on uh, one server. Uh, and uh, when we've seen that uh, for the first time, it was uh, quite confusing. Um, so um, in this example, um, we can uh, see that uh, the structure is uh, the same. Uh, it is uh, HTTP POST request. Uh, the uh, URI uh, is um, 010 uh, slash A, then some number, uh, dot PHP. And um, the request body uh, contains um, the value of P parameter, uh, or uh, doesn't contain anything. Uh, so uh, it is um, not very difficult to write one surukata rule that will uh, detect um, all this uh, communication. Uh, this is the uh, communication of uh, fake token Trojan. Um, it is uh, it, uh, it differs from uh, the previous one. Uh, it is uh, HTTP POST request to um, URI uh, service dot PHP, and uh, the request body um, contains um, a long set of uh, parameter value pairs. Uh, here is a communication of um, the new uh, GIMP. Uh, banking Trojan. Uh, it is also HTTP POST request uh, to the URI uh, API, uh, then uh, maybe some number, slash uh, ping dot PHP. Uh, that's why we called it GIMP, well, ping, GIMP. Um, and uh, the request body uh, contains uh, information about uh, the infected device. And um, it uh, differs from the previous traffics from uh, other bankers, so it also can be uh, detected using Suricata. And uh, the last one, uh, Gustav Trojan, uh, it is also a post uh, request um, to URI uh, API slash version slash uh, load SMS uh, dot uh, PHP. Uh, and um, the request uh, body contains um, uh, the incoming uh, SMS. Uh, 
so uh, this example shows that uh, despite all uh, these samples, uh, the, the ex executables uh, of this Trojan, Trojans uh, look uh, the same and are, are detected uh, by one um, antivirus logic. Uh, we can uh, distinguish them uh, by families uh, using Suricata. Uh, the next example is uh, Clipper Android Stealer. Uh, it uh, tracks clipboard content, and uh, if it finds a digital wallet number, it can be um, some payment system or a cryptocurrency. Uh, then it uh, gets the um, attacker's wallet number from common control server and uh, replaces uh, the uh, wallet number from the clipboard uh, with the uh, attacker's one. It targets uh, Bitcoin, Litecoin, Ethereum, Dogecoin, um, Kiwi Wallet, and so on. Um, here is uh, the request uh, from the first found example um, of Clipper. And um, it's hard to write a good uh, generic rule if you have only one traffic example. Uh, so uh, we made several rules, and um, here is one of them. Um, I wrote a rule uh, for um, HTTP URI uh, gateway slash um, attach dot uh, PHP uh, question mark and um, HTTP user agent uh, starts with um, a patch uh, HTTP client. Uh, here are another examples of uh, traffic uh, caught by uh, this rule. And uh, after checking the executables that uh, generated this traffic, we uh, made sure that uh, they all were uh, different variants of uh, this uh, Clipper family. Uh, but uh, there were also some strange alerts. Um, traffic uh, looked very much uh, like uh, the traffic of uh, Clipper. Um, only the uh, parameters uh, in the URI uh, were different. And um, after checking the executables, we found out that uh, it, um, that uh, the functionality of uh, the executable was uh, completely different. It was not uh, Clipper, um, it was uh, Sauron Locker uh, ransomware. Uh, it encrypts files and uh, contacts on the device and uh, asks for a ransom in Bitcoin, Litecoin, uh, Dogecoin, uh, or a Kiwi Wallet. Uh, let's compare requests from uh, Clipper and uh, Sauron. Um, here are uh, directories in the URI uh, before uh, gateway slash attach.php. Uh, they both use uh, beget.tech uh, hosting provider, and uh, the only difference is in uh, their transmitted parameters. Um, in these examples, uh, URI begins with uh, gateway slash attach.php. And uh, here are other requests uh, from uh, the same samples. Uh, with um, relative address of the script, um, gateway slash uh, settings uh, dot PHP. Um, is it a coincidence? I don't think so. So uh, let's compare these uh, two malware families. Um, we, uh, we have already seen that uh, the uh, requests to uh, common control server differ only in uh, transmitted parameters. Uh, Clipper was uh, first found in um, August 2018, Sauron in uh, June 2018. Uh, they both contain strings in Russian. Uh, they both use uh, beget.tech and uh, geno.ru uh, hosting providers, and uh, they use uh, intercepting sets of uh, cryptocurrencies. 
And uh, based on this, we uh, cannot say for sure, but can assume that uh, these trojans uh, were written by uh, one group. And uh, it was not the end of the story. Uh, one more example with uh, traffic that uh, is the same as uh, Clippers traffic, um, including uh, the set of uh, transmitted parameters. Um, However, it was uh, detected with completely different uh, antivirus uh, ver verdict. And uh, after a quick analysis, uh, we found that it was a classic Bankin Trojan, uh, Slampor, uh, a rather old one, with uh, injected uh, Clipper model. Um, in uh, our practice, uh, we have met uh, other situations when uh, surcate detection helped us uh, find uh, something interesting and not obvious, and um, I'll tell about them in a few words. So um, there, there are cases uh, with multi-platform uh, malware uh, when um, for example, a rule written for a Windows sample alerted on traffic from uh, Android uh, APK, and um, it was not looking like a false alarm. Um, it uh, can be uh, in case of uh, client and server applications, uh, for example, a remote administration tool, um, or uh, it could be um, APT attack uh, which uh, is uh, multi-platform. Um, and another case is uh, tracking malware evolution uh, when um, an old rule uh, alerted on the traffic from uh, a new sample. So uh, probably um, it um, evolved from uh, the old one. And um, to summarize uh, my talk, um, Scanning traffic from uh, already detected uh, malicious executables may uh, lead to interesting discoveries. Um, uh, it is uh, also, uh, it is always uh, good to write generic rules uh, for this case, uh, but uh, don't forget about false alarms uh, when your rule uh, alerted on uh, some traffic. Uh, uh, it could be just a false alarm, uh, so uh, no uh, another similarities in uh, these uh, two malicious files. Um, for uh, malware classification, uh, rules for uh, requests from client are better, as a uh, server uh, can already be dead or um, can uh, reply to uh, other bots. Um, and uh, sometimes you can find something interesting when uh, scanning uh, the traffic uh, with a set of rules for another platform. Uh, so uh, this is all. Thank you for your attention. And uh, you may ask questions. Uh, no, we uh, we just uh, run the uh, sample on sand on a sandbox environment, and uh, so it uh, starts sending requests to the actual uh, command control server. Yeah. Okay. Thank you.